The same as we did for a cash receipts journal, I've given you an infographic for the cash payments journal. Again, just to make sure that we can visualize exactly what it is that we're going to be using these for. So your cash payments journal is for all amounts that are going to be paid out of the bank account. So when we're dealing with it, the first thing it's really important for us to realize is that what we're dealing with is payments that come out of the business bank account. You've got to be very careful, as I've said before, to separate what's happening with your owner's personal account and the business account. So the entity has a business account and they pay money out of the account they pay cash out of the account the ones that we deal with the most are going to be check payments although in reality these are becoming less and less popular in in business we're using credit cards we're using EFTs we're using pay fast we're doing all sorts of other transactions um, a lot of companies don't use or don't even have checkbooks anymore but in a lot of your example they still use it so a check will be an item and we can see a little example there where you actually pay it over to someone they can go and bank and cash the check and get the money so it is a form of money it's a form it's like a promissory note if you take this particular piece of paper to the bank they will give you x money for it more popular is your EFT payment. This is a payment that's made directly out of my bank account into someone else's bank account. I don't have to write out a piece of paper, give it to you, you go take it to your bank. I get your banking details, I pay it straight from my account into your account. And this obviously is becoming a little bit more popular as well. So between paying stuff out of drawing money out of the bank in cash, your checks, your EFT, very popular, the most popular ways and the ones that we're going to deal with. Your accountant needs to record how much cash has been paid and very importantly what it was paid for. We've got to keep track of all the money coming out of the account and what it is for. Remember when we did our general ledger, we spoke about the debits and the credits. A uh, hundred rand came out of the bank and it was for stationery. So you can remember when we did our debits and our credits, if you look in the bank account itself, you could see, oh, there's a hundred that's been credited. Why? Oh, for stationery. And then you can go and find the stationery account that was debited. So the debits and the credits of the bank indicate to us what the money was used for. We've got to make sure that we're very clear on that. Our cash payments journal has columns just like the cash receipts journal. We want the date, the details, the folio, the expenses, the credits, the sundry and the bank amount. I want to know exactly how much has come out of the bank and I want to know what it was for. If I'm making payments on a regular basis, I will give it a column. Specific expenses, sundry costs, creditors, costs of sales, wages even. If there are things that I'm paying out and I'm doing it quite often, instead of doing it separately, I'll create a column for it. And we'll go through examples on that just now. At the end of the month, all of our balances will be posted to the general ledger and I should have one amount showing how much money was paid out of the bank on that particular month or for that particular month. And for my expenses or my cost of sales, I'll have one amount that goes into the other side of all of those transactions or the other side of all of those accounts. Our big concern here is to make sure that all payments that are made from the bank account can be tracked which means we've got documentation for all of them, they can all be traced, and that nothing has left the bank account without being recognized. Some of the slightly trickier ones are items like bank charges, because the bank doesn't say to you, please, can you pay me bank charges? They don't say, can you write out a check for bank charges or can you do an EFT? They just take it straight out of your account. So if you're not watching your bank account, it's going to start going lower and lower and you'll find that the bank has been taking bank charges. They don't wait for your permission. Another thing that makes this a little bit trickier are debit orders. Debit orders are ways of ensuring that we're going to get money. If someone says to me, Yvonne, I can't pay you right now. Can I pay you in installments every month? I'm a little nervous that I'm not going to get money from you. So what I'll say is I'll accept that as long as you set up a debit order. You go to your bank and you tell them I want to pay Yvonne a thousand rand every month. And I want to pay that for five months. And the bank sets up a, a, a stop order, a debit order. And on that particular day, every month, the bank will take the thousand rand out of your account and pay it to me. So you don't give any authorization for that at the end of the month because you gave it in advance. And at the end of five months, 
the bank will stop the debit order. So this again, the day that the debit order goes off, the, the person doesn't actually have to do anything. We've got to be very careful that we record the debit orders on a monthly basis. If you've given permission to the bank or you've given permission to a creditor to have a payment taken off your account, you're not going to authorize that. It's just going to pitch up on your bank statement. So these little items are going to mean that we've got to keep track of our bank statement. And you'll often find people will be talking about doing bank reconciliations, making sure that what they expected to be paid out of their bank account is what's actually being paid out. Because all the debit orders, the bank charges, the interest that the bank takes, all of this can mess your figures up. So we're going to start taking a look at the cash payments journal and identify all the transactions that we're going to look at there and how we're going to deal with them and what the cash payments journal actually looks like.